Uh, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me briefly to Proverbs chapter 9. And then we're going to go to another place. This one verse. And it's really stated many times in the scriptures, but I want to read it from here. Chapter 9 and verse 10. Where it says this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. It's a short verse and it comes out so quickly. But we need to stop and think of what it says. Because it's going to tie in with our message this morning about, about who Jesus is. Why? I, I, I saw something. I'm on, I'm on Facebook. How many people here are on Facebook? Facebook. Okay, and uh, you know, if you're on Facebook, you have friends. You have friends on Facebook, and they post things. And uh, one of my friends posted on there, "What's wrong with our culture? What's wrong with our nation?" And I wrote back, "Just read Romans chapter one. It explains everything. Because the problem with our nation is we have lost the fear of the Lord." And we don't care about knowing what is holy. We have lost the fear. Somebody said, when you talk about fearing God, do you mean to be afraid of Him? In a sense, yeah. Now, I'm not saying we should cower in a corner. But when we talk about fearing God, we talk about recognizing the fact that God has certain prerogatives. God can do anything He wants to do. And He'll be right doing it. Uh, I was talking with, with Debbie earlier, right before church, and our, our class reunion is coming up. We graduated together. I, I won't tell you what year, okay? But when we used to go to Arnold High School, how many people here went to Arnold High School? Before it was, before it was Valley. We had a principal named Mr. Tannis. How many people have ever heard of Mr. Lil would know. You didn't mess with Mr. Tannis. He ain't like today. Today, they, you know, they give you time out. Mr. Tanz would grab you and throw you in a locker, you know. <laughs> but you knew where he was coming from. You, you, one thing about Mr. T he, you, you, you knew where he was coming from. He was the same every day. <laughs> he was always like that. And he really, I, I really believe, after I, I knew him a little bit after school, and I really believe he had a heart to want to teach the kids to do right. You know, he had his way of doing it. <laughs> But we had, we had, we were afraid of him. Not that we would cower in the corner, but we had, a, we had respect. He was in charge, and in those days, the principal could do just about whatever he wanted to do. It's not like that anymore. Maybe that's why they got to put metal detectors. We didn't have to have metal detectors in Arnold. God can do whatever He wants to do, and we've lost. As a society, now I'm, I'm kind of preaching to the choir here because I think most of us in, in this building are saved and we know the Lord. But as a society, as a culture, we have lost a reverential fear of God. We don't care what He thinks anymore. That's why you have judges declaring that they can't pray at a graduation. That's why you have uh, our administration turning its back on Israel and saying that, that they should go back to 67 uh, borders and so forth. And all these things. We don't care about what God's Word. We used to have some kind of semblance of caring about what God thought. But we don't care anymore. That's just, that's just somebody's religion. The fear of the Lord has disappeared from our society in a whole. That's why sinful things are made legal because they can make money off of them. And what's good is called evil and what's evil is called good. We don't have a fear of God. It says that the knowledge of the holy, we don't care about what's holy anymore. We don't, we don't want to have a knowledge. We don't want to have an understanding of what is, what is sacred anymore. We, we make a mockery out of those things in our society. Why do we have shootings in, in the schools? Why do we have shootings around the street corner? Pop, pop, pop. Why, 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 why is this going on? Because we don't care anymore about what God thinks. It's nothing new. It's been going on for a long time. Turn with me over to the New Testament. I'm not going to keep you long this morning. 
Somebody said, yeah, I always say that. Matthew chapter 16. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 16. It's a passage that many of you are probably very familiar with. <clears throat> and uh, we want to start with verse... Uh, uh, let me get it here. Matthew chapter 16. Now let's just start with verse 1. The Pharisees. How many people have heard of the Pharisees? Also with the Sadducees, the leaders of Israel, the holy men and leaders of the nation of Israel. They got together. Pharisees and Sadducees didn't get together on much. They didn't like each other. But when it came to Jesus, they said, we've got to do something about this guy. So they got together. And, they, and tempting him, desired him, that he would show them a sign from heaven. They said, Jesus, you claim to be this and that and everything else. Do something. Show us something. Let some lightning fall. Give us a sign from heaven. Well, if they had been following him, they would have known he fed 5,000 people with a couple loaves and fishes. He raised people, for, people from the dead, made blind people see, made deaf people hear, made lame people walk, and they said, give us a sign from heaven. Jesus could have done anything and it would not have convinced them. In fact... I'm here to tell you that they knew exactly who Jesus was. Yeah, everybody thinks of oh, these Pharisees and Sadducees, they didn't understand who Jesus was. They knew exactly who He was. They knew who He was. But they didn't want to have anything to do with Him. Because they didn't have a fear of God. And they didn't have a knowledge of the Holy. It looked like they did on the outside. If people at that time would have looked at a Pharisee, man, they were holy looking people. They had the robes and the hats and everything. They... You know, if you look at them and say, man, there's somebody that's really holy. He's religious. But they, they didn't know the holy. They knew what they thought was holy. They knew the, 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 the rules that they had written. But they weren't concerned about what Jesus was. They didn't have a fear of God. They acted like they, they had a fear of God. But they didn't. Because if they would have had a fear of God, they would have been on their face worshiping Jesus. They should have been the first ones to have recognized Him and worshipped Him for who He was. But instead, they kept trying to tempt him and trick him. And they said, give us a sign, Jesus. And he, Jesus answered and said unto them, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, you hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. You know, we're, we're, we're really wise with everything, but when it comes to the things that are holy, we miss it. And I believe we miss it because we want to miss it. I... When people used to come to me before I was saved and tell me about Jesus Christ, I would say, oh, not because I didn't believe they were telling the truth, because I didn't want to hear that. Because if I would listen to it and respond to it, I'd have to change. I don't want to change. It's the same way with these guys. They knew that if they were going to accept Jesus as their Messiah, which they knew He fulfilled all the requirements that they were aware of in God's Word, if they were going to bow down to Him as Messiah, their, their, their lives were going to change, and they were kind of happy with their lives. I'm a Pharisee, I'm powerful, i got money, i got position, everybody looks at me, respects me. I don't, why should I give that up? They didn't have a fear of God. They didn't have a knowledge of the holy. They acted like they did. They might have had worldly understanding of religious things, but they didn't have a knowledge of the holy. Jesus says in verse 4, A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. Oh, God, man, people seeking after signs and wonders... People want to see God move. Listen, I'm, I like to see God move. God moves. Anybody here ever see God move? We've seen God move in our lives. God moving. That's, that's a wonderful thing. I'm glad when God moves. I pray God move, move. But you know what? If He never moves again, tangibly or visibly, it's not going to shake my faith in what His Word says. I mean, I pray God move, God heal, God touch. God. But if He never does another miracle... If He never does another healing, if He ne never does an another thing supernaturally, I'm still going to believe what His Word says. Because my faith isn't based on what I see, it's based on what I read. He says, a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. I know folks, man, if, you, if, something, if something's going on somewhere, they'll just... They'll run. They'll, I, I heard somebody say the other day, well, I heard somebody say the other day, well, over here, man, they're having meetings... Get in your car and drive over. 
God can move anywhere. I'm not going to follow after signs and wonders. I'm going to follow after His Word. I'm not thank God for signs and wonders. Signs and wonders ought to follow us. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Mark said. Mark said, you know, signs, this will follow those that believe. You know, okay. He said, a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and there shall no sign be given it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. We know about Jonah. He was thrown overboard. You read that story. He was in the, in the belly of the fish for three days. He died down there and was brought back to life. That's what Jesus said. I'm going I'm to be dead for three days and come back to life. And it says in verse 5, And when his disciples were come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. And Jesus said unto them, Take heed. And he's saying to us, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And they thought he was yelling at them because they forgot bread, but that's not why he said that. The leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees, what is that? Here's the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They didn't fear God, and they did not have a knowledge of the holy. They were religious without a relationship with God. That was, their, that, that was 11. Hypocrisy. Looking like one thing on the outside and being something else on the inside. And willfully and knowledgeably rejecting their Messiah. Because they didn't want to give up who they were. Or what they were. It happens every day. People don't want to change. They know who God is. They hear about the Lord. You know, again, I go back to before I was saved. They, people would tell me about Jesus. I knew they were telling me the truth, but I rejected it because I don't want to change. I don't want to give this up. I don't want to stop that. I don't want to stop going here. I don't want to stop hanging out with this bunch. You know, if, I knew if I came to the Lord and I gave my heart to God, I, those things would, would all pass away. I don't want to give it up. You know, 90, I'm, I'm, this is, I'm just going to give you an opinion. 95% of the people that you witness to know exactly what you're saying. They're not in some kind of haze, oh, you know, I don't understand. They ex understand, the gospel is really very simple. You don't need a high IQ or a college education to understand the gospel. I'm a sinner and I need saved. My life needs changed. That's that simple. Most of the people that you, you witness to, a lot of people will reject you, not because they didn't understand or because they'll say, well, you've got to prove to me now. It's because they don't want to change. Wednesday night we saw, we saw a video about origins, the beginning, you know, the crea creation, God's creation. And there's some people who say, oh, I don't believe, they show some people on there, I don't believe in creation. It's not because there's some kind of scientific evidence that disproves it. It's because they don't want to change. <laughs> My goodness, when you look at the complexity of, of life on earth and how del uh, intricate it is, that's not going to happen by accident. My goodness, I can't be that stupid to think that. Somebody had to design that thing. But they, they just don't want to change. Scientists have, you know, formulas on blackboards. They just don't want to change. They don't want to bow down. They don't, they don't want to fear God. Just like these guys. They didn't care. Now, uh, drop down a little bit. Look at verse 13. Now here's a passage that we're all familiar with. This was... This was right before Jesus' last trip to Jerusalem, before his crucifixion. They were in a place called Caesarea Philippi, which was pretty far from Jerusalem. It was up on a mountain, and this was his last, this is right before his last trip to Jerusalem. And Jesus came under the coast of Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? That's, a, that's an important question. It's really important that you ask yourself that before you take communion. Who do men say? I am. What are they saying about me? You know what? I found out everybody has an opinion about Jesus. Just about. It's hard to find somebody, especially in this nation, that doesn't have an opinion about Jesus. And if they don't have an opinion about Christ, they sure got an opinion about Christians. <laughs> Whoa. He says... He says, who do, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, some say that you're John the Baptist. Some say Elijah and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. If you ask folks today, some will say, well, he was a good prophet, he was a good teacher, he was a great man. Some will say, well, he never lived. 
Some will say, if you ask one of the like kind of emergent uh, church type folks, they'll say, oh, he's my buddy. Jesus is my buddy. Well, Jesus is my friend. He's our friend, isn't he? God's our friend, I thank God. But they're like, he's my buddy, let's go have a coffee again. If you, if you ask a Mormon, he'll say, well, Jesus, yeah, he was, uh, he was uh, the brother of Lucifer. Him and Satan were like brothers. That's what the Mormons believe. If you, if you ask uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses, they'll say he was Michael the Archangel. If you ask, uh, if you ask somebody, uh, a Muslim, somebody of the Islamic faith, they'll say he was a great prophet, but he wasn't God. Everybody has an opinion about Jesus. And everybody has an opinion about Christians. Now listen, here's what he said. They, they said, some say that you're John the Baptist, some Elijah, some Jeremiah... One of the prophets, they all had, an, everybody back then had an opinion about Jesus. You can't ignore Jesus. Okay. He said unto them, what do you say? What do you say? We've prepared the Lord's table, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. What do you say about Jesus? That's the most important question you'll ever answer. That's the most important question anybody will ever ask you. What do you say? about Jesus. Everybody has an opinion. But listen to the answer. This is one of those things where there's only one right answer. Okay. Some questions could have a couple different answers. You know. Well, there's only one right answer. When it comes to this one. Some folks will, th will have you think, you know, there are people teaching today that God accepts everybody. Everybody has their own way to God. You know, you get to God this way, you get to God that way, blah, 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 blah. But God has revealed Himself very specifically in His Word. One answer. Simon Peter answered and said this. Old Simon, this is one time when his mouth did not get him in trouble. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Simon Peter had a fear of God and a knowledge of the holy. He might not have known too much else. It might have taken uh, being sifted as wheat. It might have taken the baptism of the Holy Spirit for Peter to receive that power to be able to preach the word. But he knew one thing. If he didn't know nothing else, he knew this, that Jesus was the Messiah sent from God. He was the Son of the living God. That's, that's one thing that, that Peter knew. And that's the most important answer. You might not un understand anything else about Christianity, but if you got that right, the rest will fall into place. You've got to be right about who Jesus is. If you're not right about who Jesus is, it doesn't matter. See, that's a fear of God and a knowledge of the holy. Because the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. You can have an IQ of 50 and have a fear of God and a knowledge of the holy and be more, be higher in God's sight than somebody with an IQ of a, of a million that denies He exists. Peter gave the right answer. He said, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that my salvation doesn't rest upon my, my intelligence or my ability or my, my salvation rests upon this, right here. Jesus is the Christ. He's the Son of the living God. That's why I'm saved. I've messed up in the past. I messed up before I was saved. I've messed up since then. I'm probably going to mess up again. That doesn't change the fact that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, the Messiah. And that's where my faith is. Now, I'm, I'm praying. I said, God, don't, please help me not to mess up anymore. <laughs> I said, we don't want to. I'm not giving us a blank check to do what you feel like doing. And God, that's not, that's not it. He'll, he'll correct us. He'll convict us. He'll, he'll change us. He'll cause us to be the people He wants us to be if we just let Him. He'll send His Holy Spirit to teach us the truth. But it's all based on this. Because this is what Jesus said. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. He wasn't talking about Peter. Peter ain't the rock any more than I am. The rock was the revelation that God gave to Peter 
supernaturally. That Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's what our faith is based on. Nobody can change that. If my faith is based on Peter, he changed. Because just a few verses later here, Jesus is calling him Satan. <laughs> okay? I thank, God my, I thank God my faith isn't based on him. I thank God my faith isn't based on preachers that, I, that I, I've heard preached, you know, and, and I got saved, listen to this one and that one and that one, and they've gone their separate ways. My faith isn't based on them. My faith is based on Jesus Christ. He never changes. It's the fear of God and it's the knowledge of the holy. God help us have a fear, a reverential respect and fear and awe of the Almighty God that spoke everything into creation. And God, give us the knowledge and understanding, just like you did, Peter, of things that are holy. Man, we're really good at learning things about the world. Help me learn things about... Because that's understanding. He says, I say unto you, Peter, that upon this rock I will build my church. And I don't care what the devil... It doesn't matter. I mean, he's devil's a powerful being, but he's nothing compared to Jesus Christ. He's nothing compared with the blood of Jesus that covers us. I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I don't care what kind of laws they pass. I don't care what kind of things they do in Washington or in the seats of government. They can't stop the body of Christ. And I'm going to tell you something else, too. The body of Christ has been one from the very beginning. People say, oh, the body of Christ is all separate. No, it's not. You can't separate Christ. Men, we've tried. Men have tried. You've got this church and that church and this denomination and that denomination. We do things this way you do it that way and they want to argue with each other. It doesn't matter. We're still all one. Christ was never divided. And the, the church has never been divided, no matter how hard we've tried. But it seems, I, don't know, I don't know. Mankind has a has a tendency to try to take something good and just cut it all up. We did a pretty good job of it. But the church is still one. You know, this tradition, that tradition, that, the blood, you know, this book of prayer, this cat. <clears throat> if it's the blood of Jesus that makes us one in Him. We might not worship the same as other folks. It doesn't matter. We're not saved by our worship. We not, might not pray. We might not have an order of service like they do. That's, that's not what saves us. What saves us is this right here. And this is the same for everybody that believes. He says, I say unto you that you are, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Verse 19. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. We as the body who are standing on this rock of Christ. You know, we have authority. Now I'm not... People will take passages like this and they'll, and they'll go way, like they'll take it to another planet. And they'll say, well, you have authority, you know, to speak this and speak that. Speak that. We have authority to do the will of God. And we have power to do the will of God. But we're not going to know the will of God unless we fear God and have an understanding of things that are holy. This is why Paul said over in Romans, Present your bodies a living what? Sacrifice. That you may know the perfect and acceptable will of God. We can't know His will. We can't understand His purpose for us until we have a fear of God and an understanding of the holy. Reading on just a little bit more. And we're going we're gonna to partake in the Lord's table. Look at verse 21. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must suffer, he must go to, unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. They didn't listen very well. But he was telling them this. Because when it happened, they were all kind of like, oh, what happened? But he was telling them what was going, going to go on. See, man, we like that power thing. We like the gate to hell should not prevail. But when we find out there's going to be some suffering in the journey, we say, oh, wait a minute. That's why a lot of people 
you know, people reject the gospel, not because they don't understand it, because they don't want to, they don't want to give up what they like. Jesus said, Boys, I'm going to, I'm going to head, we're heading for Jerusalem. And they're going to, I'm going to be shamefully entreated. I'm going to suffer many things. I'm going to be killed. But I'm going to raise again on the third, on the third day. And Peter, Peter should have kept his mouth shut. He was, he was doing good up to now. <laughs> you know, when he, when he spoke the last time, he got a pat on the back. But Peter took him and began to rebuke Jesus. said, oh, Jesus, no, that will not no, oh, Jesus, no, no. See, G- Peter, he, he slipped. He thought he knew more than God. He thought he knew more than Jesus. His knowledge of the Holy was incomplete. His fear of God was founded on something different than reality. He said, Lord, this won't, this won't happen. Verse 23, but Jesus turned and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. Boy, I, I bet you Peter probably felt about this big. You ever, anybody ever put you down like that? You ever, anybody ever get put down, you know? Somebody that you think is really, you know, and you say something to them and they like put you down. You think you're going to pat you on your back and, and they end up slapping you in the face. He said, you're an offense unto me. Why? For you savor not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. He's saying, Peter, you're falling into that trap. You're not fearing God and you're not, you're not understanding the things of, that are holy. You see, the things that are holy and the things of God aren't always the way we think they ought to be. And when we start going through things that we don't understand, we say, God, I mean some of us, and I know some of you all, and I know people going through things say, God, why has this happened? I don't always have an answer for that, but I know this much. This Word says that no matter what goes on, if you're God, He's going to take care of you. He has a purpose and a reason. He can take years and years of stuff and turn it into something good. He can take your suffering and use it to bless somebody else and, 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 and do something good with it. And we might not understand what we're going through, but I believe every one of us, when we stand before the Lord someday, will understand. We won't have to ask any questions. God, why did I have to go through this? Why did I have to go through that? I believe as soon as we set our eyes on Jesus on the other side of the green, He's going to let us know we're not going to have any questions. Because we have a fear of God and knowledge of the Holy. We have wisdom and understanding. That's what the Word says. Jesus said to His disciples, and we're going to partake in the Lord's table, If any man will come after Me, let him deny himself. See, we don't want to deny ourselves. We don't, we don't, we don't want to believe we don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't want to change. We don't want to give up the things that feed our flesh. That's the way I was. There was too much that I liked. That I knew that if I started following Christ, they would have to go. You know, I look back on it now, and I say, thank God they went. Because many years later, 30, 40, 50, 27 years later, had I kept on the track that I was on before I got saved, I'd be in a whole lot worse shape than I am right now. Amen? How many, you know, some folks get saved when they're really young, and that's good, praise the Lord. But some of us have got saved when we got a little bit older. <laughs> I thank God every day. I thank God every day they didn't have crack cocaine when I was a kid. No. <laughs> it got quiet. I thank God every day, I do, almost every day, I say, I thank God they did not have crack cocaine when I was in my years of doing that kind of stuff. I mean, we had other stuff, but nothing like that. I thank God. There's, a, there's about three or four things I thank God all the time that didn't happen the way I thought they were supposed to happen. Because if, if they had happened, it would be, I almost had a Boston job over Allegheny Ludlam. Okay, over Allegheny Ludlam. I worked over Allegheny Ludlam for 33 years. I'm, some of you know the story. I've told the story many times. I almost had a Boston job over there. Almost had a Boston job. And they passed me over. And I said, oh, man. I said, the Lord, I was looking for it. Give me more money, you know. He'd wear a white hat. Man, if, if I had got that Boston job, it would have been the biggest lifetime disaster I would have ever experienced in my life. You know that? 
Because about a year later, they fired like half their bosses. <laughs> okay, listen. You know, at the time, I thought it was horrible. But when it happened, you know, it was, it was terrible. But I look back on it now and I say, thank God. He says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What's your soul worth? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his work. I want to ask you this morning as we prepare the Lord's table, that you would ask yourself this question. Who do I say Jesus is? What do I say about Jesus? Any other answer than the Christ, the Son of the living God, is a wrong answer. It's important. The Bible says, let a man examine himself before he partakes of the Lord's table. That doesn't mean to see if you've been perfect or see if you've done anything bad. You know, I grew up in a church where you had to like confess all your sins and then take communion. It's not about that. Do you know who Jesus is? Do you have a fear of God? And do you have a knowledge of the holy? Do you have wisdom and understanding? The fear of God and the knowledge of the holy. I'm going to ask... Uh, Mide, could you come and just play very softly? And I, wanna, I just want to pray. And I want you to take this time where you might examine yourself. Father, we're not looking at ourselves to see if we're perfect. We're not looking at ourselves to see if we're sinless. But do we know who you are? Do we know... Father, do we have a genuine, heartfelt fear of God, which is the beginning of wisdom? Do we have the knowledge of the holy, which is understanding? God, I pray that as we would examine ourselves and we would find ourselves lacking in those areas, Father, I pray that we would pray this morning, each and every one of us, Lord, help me have a, a healthy, reverential, awe-filled fear of who you are and what you can do. Not that I want to hide in a corner and be afraid of you, but I want to respect you and reverence you and acknowledge your holiness and your greatness and your righteousness and your justice. Father, if I have spent more time increasing my knowledge in the things of the world than the things that are holy, I pray, Lord, you would help me have a desire and a hunger not for the things that please my flesh, but you would give me a desire and a hunger for the things that are holy. To understand, to have a knowledge, to have godly understanding. As we prepare, Father, to partake of your table, as you have invited us to come.